My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm in Jerusalem, and this site is where the ancient fortress of Antonia was first constructed, a massive fortress that was constructed by King Herod and named in honor of his dear friend, Mark Antony. Maybe you've heard of Antony and Cleopatra. Maybe you've never put it all together, but all these figures lived at one time. Herod, Mark Antony, Cleopatra, these were all contemporaries, and in fact, they were friends. And when Herod built this fortress, he named it the tower or the fortress of Antonia in honor of his friend, Mark Antony. And it became the palace of Pilate in Jerusalem. It's in the northeast corner of the temple, and it was filled with Roman soldiers. And the night that Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was brought here. And when Jesus was here, the Roman soldiers played games at Jesus' expense. And we read about this in Luke chapter 22 and verse 63. Listen to what the Bible says. You know, Luke was a doctor, so he always records amazing details. But listen to what he says. And the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. Two very important things. First, the Bible says they mocked him. The Greek word mocked, the Greek word impaizo, was a particular word used particularly to describe games you would use to entertain children. This was like playing charades or impersonating someone in a very silly way. And when the Bible says they mocked him, what does that mean? It means they had heard about Jesus' healing power. They had heard that Jesus was a prophet. They had heard that Jesus worked miracles. So here Jesus was sitting in this fortress, about to be scourged. What was in front of him was horrific. Jesus was going to give his life and his blood for the sins of the human race, and the very humans he was going to die for began to mock him, play charades. They began to impersonate him. They began to act like they were healing the sick. They began to laugh and act like they were casting out demons. One of them may have acted like he was a prophet. They literally began to mock him right in his presence. And the Bible says they also smote him. That word smote that is used is a particular word which describes the barbaric beating of a slave. So think of it. Here Jesus is sitting in this massive fortress about to undergo a grueling event for the healing of the human race and the forgiveness of sin. He's about to give his life, and the very people he's about to give his life for begin impersonating him, mocking him, playing charades, and then they double up their fists. And in the same way that they would have beat a slave, they begin to physically slap him and beat him in the face. It was abusive what they did to him. And that's not all. Listen to what the next verse says. And when they had blindfolded him. Now, why would they blindfold him? Because they were playing games at Jesus' expense. And when they blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked, saying, prophesy, who is it that smote thee? And many other things blasphemously spake they against him. So they said, hey, you're a prophet, so we're going to check you out. And they blindfolded him. And then they begin to beat him. Hey, prophet, tell us, who beat you? If you really operate in the supernatural, if you really have these gifts working in you, if you're really a prophet, then tell us, who hit you? And then they would strike him again, laugh and say, tell us, prophet, who was it that hit you? And many other things they did. All of these things, playing games, at Jesus' expense. But Jesus went through this. He endured it. And even though they treated him in a very abusive way, he still died for them. He didn't reject them. The blood he shed was even for them. Today, I want to talk to you about the Easter story. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. I'm so glad you joined me for today's program. Today, we're going to pick up right where we left off in the last program, where we were seeing the abuse that Jesus suffered at the hands of Caiaphas and the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the religious leaders in the city of Jerusalem. But I'm speaking to you from my series called 
unknown facts about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They may not be unknown to everybody, but they were unknown to me. I grew up in church, like most people, hearing the same Easter message year after year after year, and I was so grateful for the Easter message. But every year I wondered, surely there's got to be more to the story than what I'm hearing. So when I became an adult and I began to read Greek and really began to be a serious student of the Bible, I dug into the Gospels to see what was there that I had never heard, and I was amazed at what I found. When you really dig into the Gospels and put together all the pieces in the Gospel story, the story of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus is just amazing. It is loaded with information that no one had ever shared with me. And I've put all of that information into this series, which is based on these programs, and it comes with a wonderful study guide with all the Greek words. I think you're going to enjoy that. All the definitions, all the verses, the points, the principles, lots of questions for you to consider. Perfect for your personal study life, or if you're discipling somebody, and you should be discipling somebody, that's part of our responsibility. This would be great for you to use to do that. Or if you're in a Bible study group, this would be super for you to use to get ready for Easter. Unknown facts about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You need to know these facts. We're also offering you my book called Paid in Full, a marvelous book, a beautiful package, but what's more important is what's in it. This book is loaded with revelation, details, information. I've put it all into this book to help you walk into the story of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The subtitle says, An In-Depth Look at the Defining Moments of Christ's Passion. Order your copy today. But we're going to pick up where we left off in the last program. Jesus has left the Garden of Gethsemane, and He has been led to Caiaphas in the city of Jerusalem, where He is abused by the religious leaders. Caiaphas was not only the high priest, he was a Sadducee. And the Sadducees were sad. They didn't believe in the supernatural. They didn't believe in the miraculous. They tried to debunk all of it. The Sadducees even said most of the events in the Old Testament that were miraculous were just myth, just legend. They said it was all superstitious. And that's why the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe in anything supernatural. So they really didn't like Jesus because Jesus had a miraculous ministry. Jesus stood for everything that the Sadducees did not like. They were disgusted with it. They disapproved of it. And Jesus to them was the epitome of what they despised. So when Jesus was placed in their midst, they really taunted him. They abused him. When they struck him, they weren't just striking him. They were striking what he stood for. Every time they spit on him, they were spitting on the anointing. Every time they doubled up their fist and hit him, they were striking the anointing. When they slapped him, they were slapping the anointing. They despised Jesus, and they despised the miraculous ministry and the anointing that rests on his life. And we quickly are going to review what we covered in the last program in Matthew chapter 26, beginning in verse 67 and verse 68. It says, Then did they spit in his face. We saw that this word they refers to all the religious leaders which were gathered there with Caiaphas that night. They was probably about a hundred men. That's what most scholars believe. This is not just a few men. It's about a hundred. And one by one, they lined up and took turns spitting in Jesus' face. The word spit, as we saw in the last program, but I want to review, is a Greek word which means to spit. However... It means to spit in someone's face, to show utter disgust, repugnance, dislike, or hatred. To spatter spit on a person's face was meant to humiliate, to demean, debase, and shame that person, and to make it worse. Now listen clearly. The offender would usually spit hard and close to the person's face, making it all the more humiliating. Well, think what it would be like. If someone gathered up all the saliva they could in their mouth, then got right in your face as close as they could get, and then just hacked and spit as hard as they could right in your face. You could almost imagine the impact of that in your face and how disgusting that would be to be subject to that kind of treatment. Well, the Bible says they did it. All 100 men lined up, and one by one they took turns gathering saliva in their mouth, hacking, 
spitting hard right in the face of Jesus. And by the time that Caiaphas and these religious leaders were finished spitting in Jesus' face, spit was dribbling down his nose, dribbling down his forehead into his eyes, dribbling onto his cheekbones, dribbling down his chin, even oozing onto his clothes. This was a really disgusting, humiliating sight. And as I told you before, it's likely that Malchus was among them. Malchus was the servant of the high priest. He was the high priest's personal assistant. It is Malchus that had overseen the events in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus was arrested. It was Malchus who lost an ear due to Peter grabbing his sword and cutting his ear off. It was Malchus whom Jesus miraculously healed. In fact, the healing of Malchus was the last healing of Jesus in Jesus' earthly ministry. And now it's likely that Malchus is there among the men that are spitting on Jesus because he was the high priest's assistant. If Caiaphas was there, Malchus was there. And it's likely that Malchus got caught up in this moment and joined in with the rest of them. After all that Jesus had done for Malchus, now Malchus joined them in spitting on Jesus. And that's not all. The Bible says they spit in his face and buffeted him. We saw this word buffeted, the Greek word kolophidzo, means to double up the fist and to strike as hard as you can. The word kolophidzo means to violently beat. Now the same religious leaders, this is so amazing to me, there they are dressed in all their religious clothing, all their religious garb. Outwardly they look so holy and so religious, but inwardly they are so rotten that they line up and begin spitting in the face of Jesus, and then they form a line again, and now one by one they double up their fist, and each one of them begin to violently, that's what the word kolophidzo means, buffet him, they begin hitting him as hard as they can in the head. And that's still not the end of the story. The Bible says, then they smote him with the palms of their hands. This word smote, the Greek word which means to slap. Well, I don't know if you've ever been slapped, but that is not an enjoyable experience. It hurts when you're slapped. Well, just imagine a hundred men lining up, strong men with their big hands, slapping you after you've already been spit on and already been violently beaten by fists. Now they're slapping him and they're saying, prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is it that slapped you? If you're really so prophetic, tell us who it is that's slapping you. But before all of that, I mean, this is a horrible event, but before any of that took place, Jesus was already abused by the soldiers that held him before he was delivered to Caiaphas and to the other religious leaders. Jesus was held by temple police before he was introduced to this horrible treatment by Caiaphas. Listen to what the Bible tells us about that. Luke 22, 63 says, And the men that held Jesus, it refers to the temple police. This is before any of the abuse by Caiaphas and the other religious leaders. And the men, the temple police that held Jesus, mocked him and smote him. What does it mean when the Bible says they mocked him? It means they played games with Jesus. Have you ever felt somebody played games with you? made fun of you, mocked you, ridiculed you. They played games with Jesus. What does that mean? When the Bible says they mocked him, it is a Greek word, impaizo, which means to play the game. But listen careful. Often it was used for playing a game with children or amusing a crowd by impersonating someone in a silly and exaggerated way. This word might be used in a game of charades when someone intends to comically portray someone or even to make fun of, to ridicule, or to mock someone else. It means to impersonate someone in a silly and exaggerated way. So that night, the temple police who had Jesus, they were guarding him. These were the men that held him before they ever delivered him to Caiaphas for the horrible treatment he received from Caiaphas and the other religious leaders, the soldiers themselves made fun of Jesus. And the Bible says they mocked him. It means they played a game of charades with Jesus. What kind of games did they play? They mocked him in a silly way, impersonating him. 
maybe impersonating people that had been healed or impersonating people that had been delivered from demons, impersonating people falling under the power of God, impersonating people whose eyes were being opened. They literally made fun of Jesus in a silly and exaggerated way. So there's that Jesus bound. And these soldiers, these temple police in front of Jesus now begin impersonating Jesus or impersonating those that have been healed. Maybe he's stumbling like they're under the power of God, laughing, having a good time. Maybe acting like their eyes have suddenly been opened and they can see. Or maybe acting like suddenly they were crippled, but now they can walk in a silly and exaggerated way. They're playing a game of charades with Jesus. That's what the word mocked clearly means. It only means that. They were playing games with Jesus. And then when they were finished playing charades with him, playing games with him, impersonating those that were healed or impersonating him as a prophet or as a healer, really hamming it up, putting on quite a show, having a good time, really scoffing and mocking Jesus, then the Bible says they smote him. The word smote that is used is a Greek word dero, and listen to what it means. The grueling and barbaric practice of beating a slave. In other words, they didn't just hit him, they beat him. They beat him. A word so dreadful, this word smote, the Greek word dero, that it is often translated to fillet, such as to flay the skin from an animal or from a human being. They put Jesus through a grueling experience. They literally beat him like they would have beaten a slave. This is before he was ever delivered to Caiaphas and to the religious leaders who spat on him. Before he was ever spit on, the temple police put Jesus through this horrible abuse. It's amazing. Luke 22 verse 64 says, And when they had blindfolded him, they struck him in the face and asked him, saying, Prophesy, who is it that smote thee? You see, these temple police, like everyone, had heard of Jesus' healing ministry, and they had heard that Jesus was a prophet. So now they wanted to test him. So they blindfolded him from the Greek word parakalupto, which means to cover, to wrap around, to cover one's eyes to wrap a veil or garment around someone, hiding his eyes so he can't see. It's the word for one that is blindfolded. So the temple police took some kind of a garment, completely wrapped it around Jesus' head, and then they begin to strike him. The Bible says they struck him from the Greek word pio. The word pio means to strike, to sting. As a person who viciously strikes someone else with a dangerous tool, a weapon, or even an instrument, it can also be translated to sting like a scorpion that injects its stinger into a victim or to beat with the fist. The usage of this word struck, the Greek word pio, means they were beating him with their fists. Probably they were beating him with some kind of weapon or instruments, some kind of a club, beating him, striking him. It was stinging almost like somebody stung by a scorpion. This was a horrible event that Jesus was going through. Just amazing. And then after slapping him, and blindfolding him, they taunted him and said, prophesy. Tell us, since you're blindfolded and you can't see, if you're really a prophet, prophesy and tell us who is it that is slapping you. Then they'd slap him and say, now can you tell us who did that? Tell us, prophet. If you're really a prophet, prophesy. Tell us who it was that just slapped you. Then they slapped him again and said, now who was that one? Who was that one that slapped you? One after another slapping him, beating him, even beating him with some kind of instrument, putting him through a grueling experience, the Greek redero, which means almost to fillet. They were nearly filleting him. It was such a grueling experience that Jesus was going through. And Luke 22, verse 65 continues to say, and many other things blasphemously spake they against him. That word blasphemy from the Greek word blasphemeo, which means to speak derogatory words for the purpose of injuring or harming one's reputation. It describes profane, foul, unclean language. Any derogatory speech intended to defame, injure, or harm another's reputation. 
It includes any kind of debasing, derogatory, nasty, shameful, or ugly speech intended to humiliate someone. We can only imagine what they said. These were military men. These were temple police. And by the way, the temple police were pretty rough. These were the police who were stationed there at the temple to quell any kind of uprising or insurgency. These were really rough, tough men. And you can just imagine how foul they could be. And now they've taken the lid off and they're screaming uncontrollably yelling uncontrollably. It is like a demonic force has been released. They are attacking the Son of God, yelling, screaming, blasphemous things intended to humiliate and debase Jesus. All of that occurred before he was delivered to Caiaphas. And that's when all the religious men then lined up and began spitting hard in his face. You see, usually when we think about the events of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, we think about Jesus being judged by Pilate. Maybe we think about the scourging, which Jesus endured, which was horrific. We're going to be covering that. We think of the crucifixion and what it was like for him to be crucified. But before he was ever delivered to Pilate, Jesus was already horribly abused. Had anybody ever told you that? They spit on him, a hundred men spitting on him striking him, slapping him. But before that, the temple police blindfolded him, slapped him, taunted him, mocked him, played charades with Jesus, put him through such a horrible event that Luke, the doctor, carefully uses the Greek word dero, the same Greek word which describes the act of filleting someone. It was a grueling experience, such abuse. They were nearly filleting Jesus with their words and with their actions, all of that before he was delivered to Caiaphas, who hated Jesus because Jesus represented supernatural ministry. Jesus went through a lot for you and for me. They literally played games with Jesus. If you've ever felt that somebody has played games with you, they've taunted you or made fun of you, then talk to Jesus. Because Jesus literally experienced a moment when they played charades with him and they played games with him. And if you've been through any kind of abuse like this, talk to him because Jesus is one who truly understands. Now we're out of time, but when I come back in just a moment, I'm going to pray for you. From the courtyard of Pilate to the hill of Calvary, Every step Jesus took on that Good Friday, he had you in mind. The Bible says Jesus died so our debt could be paid in full. In his book, Paid in Full, Rick Renner guides you through the details of Jesus' final hours on earth. In Paid in Full, you'll discover that this striking narrative of love and redemption is much more than the story taught in Sunday school. This powerful book can be yours for just $15 when you call or go online today. You can also get unknown facts about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Available in digital or physical formats. Starting at just $40, you can discover the power of the cross and the plan to forgive mankind of sin like never before. Don't miss this special offer, paid in full, and unknown facts about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Call now or go to renner.org. My name is Joe Renner coming to you from Moscow, Russia. And I want to tell you how your support is impacting thousands of people right here in Moscow. All around the world, people are living longer, and many elderly people in Moscow are left helpless and lonely. Loneliness is a terrible thing. No one should be left to die in loneliness. But because of your financial support, we're able to reach these wonderful people. And because of the gifts of our partners, we're able to give these precious people new life and a sense of community. Each week, we hold a concert for this great generation. After the concert, we invite these people to stay for a Bible study where they hear about Christ. Through these events, thousands of people have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. 
in the sunset years of their lives. Now, not only are they finding community, overcoming their loneliness, but they're finding hope. They're finding Jesus. It's only because of generous people like you who give that we're able to reach these people for Jesus. Would you consider joining us as a partner today? With your support, we're able to reach even more of these precious people. No one should die lonely. More importantly, no one should die without the opportunity to know Jesus. With your support, we're able to reach these people. Please call or go online right now before it's too late for one of these special people. Right from your home, you can help us help others by becoming a partner and a part of the solution. Please call us or go online to winner.org. Your generous support makes a difference. Please call or go online right now. Wow, today's program has been amazing. We're looking at the abuse that Jesus suffered at the hands of temple police before he was abused by Caiaphas and the religious leaders. You know, Peter tells us something very important in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21 and 22. Listen to the words of Peter. For even hereunto were you called, because Christ suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps. That word example is the Greek word, which really means to put your foot in the footprints of somebody else. When our kids were young, we would take them to the beach and I would walk in front of them and they would try to walk in my footsteps. That's the word that is used here, which means when we're in a situation where we feel abused, or if we're in a situation where we feel like we're not in control and everything is against us, in those moments we need to stop, put everything on pause and think about Jesus because Jesus left footprints for us. And if we'll study Jesus and follow his examples and just put our foot where he put his feet and walk in his steps and do what he did and respond the way he responded, we'll be all right. That's the example that Jesus left for us. That's what I want you to think about today. But I'm speaking to you from my series called Unknown Facts About the Death, Burial, and Resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's 25 parts. It will really make a difference in your life or to yours. I'm also speaking to you from my book called Paid in Full, an in-depth look at the defining moments of Christ's passion. But I want to pray for you. Father, I pray for every person today who feels abused, slapped, spit on. Lord, we know that the wisdom of the Holy Spirit dwells within every one of us. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to help us know how to walk in Christ's footsteps through every situation we find ourselves in. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there's power. God's word really has power. So let it work in your life today and release its power in you. And I'll see you in the next program. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org or call 1-800-742-5593. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.